Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about how to become a CPA in Canada from beginning to end. Hopefully this video will help you better understand the journey in becoming a CPA. The overview for today is that we will be talking about how to get into the CPA Professional Education Program, which is also referred to as the PEP Program. What are the entry points into the PEP Program? What is the PEP Program? What is the common final exam, which is also referred to as the CFE? What is the work experience required to get your CPA? And what are the requirements to maintain your CPA after you get it? There are two ways to enter the CPA PEP program. The first way is through completing an undergraduate degree or master's program. This method of entering the PEP program is most common, and if you are enrolled in a four-year undergraduate program with majoring in accounting, you're most likely to fulfill this requirement. Later on, I will explain to you how to double check if you have all the required courses to enroll into the PEP program. The second method in entering the CPA PEP program is for people who have not completed an undergraduate degree or master's program majoring in accounting. CPA provides preparatory courses, which are individual accounting courses for students who have not completed specific accounting courses. To be eligible to enroll in the preparatory courses, you need to have 30 credit hours or equivalent of education at a post-secondary institution, and this does not have to be from accounting or business-related courses. Here are the 14 prerequisite courses that everyone has to complete before entering the CPA PEP program. For each non-core and core course, there is a minimum grade requirement that needs to be met. In addition, your overall average of all core courses need to be 65% or higher to be admitted into the PEP program. To help determine if you have completed the 14 prerequisite courses, CPA Ontario provides the following site to help. I will put a link to the site in the description below. On the site, you'll be able to enter your university, the program that you're in, and the year that you're expected to graduate. Then the site will automatically show you the 14 prerequisite courses and the course equivalents that are at your school. So now let's talk about the entry points into the PEP program. If you only have an undergraduate degree, you would start at Core 1, and this will take you approximately 17 months to complete the full PEP program and writing your CFE. If you have completed your undergraduate degree, and on top of that, you spent four months getting a diploma and spent about $8,000 to $10,000 to complete, you would start off at Capstone 1. If you've completed your undergraduate degree and then pursued a master's degree in accounting, which would take you eight to 12 months, spending $10,000 to $27,000 to complete, you would be eligible in writing the CFE upon graduation. Each core, elective, and capstone module takes approximately eight weeks to complete, and if you started in May 2021, you would expect to write your common final exam in September 2022. To help determine where you will enter the PEP program after you complete your undergrad, diploma, or master's degree, CPA has provided the following document to help. A link of this will also be in the description below. On this document, you will see various schools and programs listed, and where you will enter the PEP program if you complete them. For example, if you have completed the Queen's University BCom and Graduate Diploma, you will be able to skip the two core modules, two electives, and jump straight to the Capstone 1 module. So now let's talk about what is the PEP program. In the PEP program, each module takes about eight weeks to complete, and you will have weekly case assignments and multiple choice quizzes to submit. PEP candidates must attain a 75% overall grade to write the module final exam. The module final exam consists of a case and multiple choice questions. The first two modules you will need to complete are Core 1 and Core 2, which covers all six technical competencies. Even though you can be tested on all six competencies, Core 1 will focus mainly on numbers 1, 4, and 6, while Core 2 focuses mainly on numbers 2, 3, 3, and 5. In your next two modules, you will get to pick two of four elective topics, which are Assurance, Performance Management, Tax, and Finance. 
If you aim to join any of the accounting firms, you will most likely be asked to take assurance and tax. In addition, there is a note talking about public accounting students and how they must take tax and assurance electives to get their public accounting license, which means you will be eligible to sign off on financial statements. This only applies to you if you want to become specifically a partner at an accounting firm in the future. If you don't have that intention of becoming a partner at an accounting firm, which is the majority of CPAs, then this requirement of only taking assurance and tax will not apply to you. However, if in the future you get an opportunity to become a partner at an accounting firm and you have not taken these electives, you can always complete an additional exam after you become a CPA. For anyone else, they should choose the two electives that they have the most interest in or understand the most. Normally, people would do assurance and tax or performance management with any other electives. The reason for taking performance management is because there's more flexibility when answering the questions as there can be multiple right, an right answers when talking about compensation or the balance scorecard. However, this elective will also have a lot of managerial accounting topics such as overhead costs and contribution margin. Finance would be for people who really like to crunch the numbers. Lastly, I would only recommend tax for people that are good in it, as this elective goes fairly in depth in this topic, and you either know it or you don't. It's hard to guess what is the right answer if you haven't memorized the tax section. The next module will be Capstone 1, which is a group assignment you would complete in groups of about six people. In this module, you'll be focusing on developing your enabling competencies more than your technical competencies. You'll be given a group and working on a case where you will have to consult them on issues they are facing. The most challenging part of this module is not going to be the case that you're going to be working on, but it's going to be managing the group dynamics within your team. The groups will be formed by CPA and are designed to simulate a diverse group that you might find in the workplace. Throughout Capstone 1, there will be multiple deliverables that you have to submit as a group, and, and in the end, there will be a final presentation on what you would suggest the company do when dealing with their current issues. After the presentation, the group will get an overall pass or fail in completing the module. In Capstone 2, candidates would be working individually again, submitting weekly cases that will simulate writing the CV. Once you have completed all the modules, you'd be eligible to write the common final exam, which is a three-day exam that you'll be writing. The first day will be an extension of Capstone 1 where you'll be consulting the same company that you did for Capstone 1, but with additional information and new issues to talk about. In day two, this is where your electives will come in. Out of the two electives that you have selected, you will be able to select one of those two and go in depth in writing cases specifically on that topic. As a tip, if performance management was one of the two electives that you have selected and you're comfortable writing about that topic, I would highly recommend choose performance management as the topic you want to go in depth in on your day two case. In day three, you will be tested on all of your six technical competencies and be writing three cases on that day. Each day of the CFE will be five hours long and you need to maintain a minimum mark for each of the six technical competencies to be able to pass the common final exam. There is no specific mark that you need to achieve to pass the CFE as you are marked against your peers, but since 2016, the overall pass rate on the CFE has been 76%. So now let's look at the CPA practical experience requirements. What you need to do is you have to be able to develop the six competency areas to become a CPA. In doing this, you have to achieve a level zero, a level one or a level two in those areas. What this means is that if you get a level zero, it means that you basically didn't do anything. So you might have just added some numbers up and you didn't do any analysis, you didn't do any explanation. A level one means that you explained some of the things that you're doing. You put some thought into it. And a level two is you actually did the thing that you were told, you analyzed it, you explained it, and you put it together yourself. So that's the level that we want to get you to. So how to get all your technical competencies? The first part is that you have to develop your core competencies, which is in financial reporting and management accounting. In those two sectors, you have to be able to develop three of those bullet points to at least a level one. 
and it can be any of those bullet points under those areas. The next step is to get depth. What that means is that in those six competency areas, one of those slices need to have two level twos developed, where the remaining one can be a level one. But you have to hit every single bullet point in that pie. The next thing is going to be breadth. What this means is that you have to gain proficiency in at least eight competency sub areas, which means eight bullet points have to be at a level one or a level two. And at least four of those bullet points need to be at a level two. To maintain your CPA designation, you have to have continuing professional development hours every single year. On an annual basis, you need to have 10 verifiable CPD hours and 10 additional CPD hours that can be verifiable or unverifiable. What verifiable CBD hours mean is that you have completed a course or a session and they have given you a certificate saying that you have earned X amount of CPD hours. On an annual basis, you need to have 20 of these hours and on a rolling three calendar year period, you need to have 120 hours, which is made up of 60 verifiable CPD hours and 60 additional CPD hours. In addition, each member must maintain a minimum of four verifiable professional ethics hours in the rolling three calendar year period as well. On an annual basis, when you renew your CPA membership and pay your annual membership fee, you will have to declare that you have completed all the minimum requirements for verifiable and unverifiable hours. No documents of the verifiable CPD hours have to be submitted at that time. However, CPA may ask you in the future to provide supporting documents of the verifiable hours. So it's important to keep these documents organized. Here's an example of how your CPD hours can look over three years. In the first example, the person has earned 20 hours in the first year, which normally would be half verifiable and half unverifiable, 20 in the second year, and then 80 in the third year. But most common, people would do the second example, which is earning 40 hours every single year with 20 of them being verifiable and 20 of them being unverifiable for a total of 120 hours over three years. Thanks again for watching my video. Hopefully you learned about how to become a CPA. If you like what you watched, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions about what you watched, please leave me a comment below and hopefully I could explain that in a future video.